Good morning. It's 6.30 a.m. Welcome to a day in the life of a Pokemon reseller, Javakuma edition. First things first, we have to feed the monsters. So, let's do it. I know I'm coming. I didn't forget about you. Come on. Next step after feeding the cats is getting some coffee. My username Java Akuma actually comes from my immense love for coffee. Java being another word for coffee and Akuma being demon or devil translated from Japanese into English. While that is brewing, I go into the office and I look at both of my eBay messages and my Instagram DMs. Today, I got one eBay message that included an offer that was just too low. I also received an Instagram DM from someone who reached out over a year ago to buy those EX era packs and they were ass mad that I guess I sold them at Charlotte Collecticon so they needed to let me know about that. Just heard the ding of the coffee maker so it's time to fuel up. Some of you guys might be wondering if I'm such a coffee lover and coffee connoisseur why in the world am I drinking Folgers? But the way that I drink my coffee is with creamer so a lot of that original coffee flavor that you may get from a better bean is covered up by that vanilla flavor that I like in my creamer. The perfect cup of coffee. Let's go pack some orders and look at some buy -y. Every graded card order that I get, gets shipped out in a cardboard box. In the process of putting together my shipping materials and printing out the labels, I am greeted in the window by my third cat. Technically, this isn't my cat. It's kind of the apartment complex's stray cat. But in the morning, she'll come around, she'll hop up in the window, and then I'll go out and give her a little bit of food and give her a little bit of attention. Back to packing up my orders. So all of my supplies actually come from Amazon. I use use a Amazon Prime Visa credit card to purchase most of the cards and, and everything business related. So all of those points accrue on that card. And then I use those points towards all of my packing supplies to ship out all of my eBay orders. I have 100% feedback rating right now on over a thousand transactions, over 1500 transactions, I think at this point. And I've always done it the same way. Every slab goes in a cardboard box. Every slab gets wrapped up in one of those Chinese restaurant thank you plastic bags. And I've had very little issues with damaged slabs and almost nobody say that the shipping was not adequate or to their liking. It's my cheap and effective way of shipping eBay orders with every order being able to be shipped in a box. After I've prepped those orders for shipping, I go into my monthly profit or loss sheet and I track those recent orders. Whenever I make those monthly profit loss videos, a lot of people ask me if my sheet is automated in any way, if it pulls from eBay's API. It's all manual, baby. <laughs> I do a couple solutions, but other than that, it's all manual. I manually track every card that I sell and using this information, I'm able to pick up on trends. I'm able to figure out whether that profit percentage was enough for me to want to buy more. But I think it's a really good tool to use to inform yourself on whether or not that next purchase is gonna be a good one. Breakfast is ready, packages are all prepped. Now it's time to hop into Baiyi and see if we can find anything fun to buy. I'm sure there's more efficient ways to search Baiyi, but this is how I do it. Whichever species I'm looking for cards for that day, I will Google Charizard Japanese name. Whatever shows up, I will copy those Japanese Japanese characters and I will put them into the search bar for Baie Mercari. And then on the left hand sidebar there are filters you'll want to choose. You'll want to choose toys, hobbies, and games. And then underneath that for the category you'll want to choose trading cards and that will narrow it down to only seeing trading cards instead of seeing cards and plushes and games. And, and then what I do is I go through every page. If I see a listing that is intriguing to me I will create a new tab of that page. And once I hit about page 10 and tabs have stacked up all the way across the browser, I will go through all of those tabs and condition check all of those photos to see if they are cards that I want to buy. It looks as though the beginning of this session was fruitful because we found a Pokecune Charizard and Charmeleon set that looks to be in really good condition. The seller has really good feedback, so I decided to buy it. Make sure to go through my buy -e videos on my channel. I try to really help you guys figure out if a particular listing is good enough to buy. There's very little seller protection, but it is a decent place to find some cards now and again if you're willing to take the risk. So it's finally lunchtime. If you guys didn't know, I have a normal nine to five. I do not do Pokemon. 
full time. My normal nine to five is I get to work from home and I am a web designer for a local firm here in North Carolina. So that's really awesome. We finally hit lunchtime. We have a good half hour hour to run some errands. Right now I'm going to be running out those boxes that we prepped this morning, ship these out to those loyal customers that I had that purchased some cards. I go to a local shipping point here. I actually don't go to the USPS. This place is closer to my house and the USPS office. Actually, the drop off box has been broken now for months. So when you're dropping off on off hours, it's much more difficult going to the post office right now than just heading up to the shipping point where I can easily just drop stuff off. I'm gonna go do that. I'll be right back. Let's do a little bit of an office tour and I can show you guys how I'm currently inventorying my graded cards and raw cards and all that nonsense. All right, so here is the office. It is a little dirty right now, so you're gonna have to forgive me about some of the mess. But let's go straight into, I bought these racks, I think off of like Sam's Club or something like that. They're like industrial shelving basically, because at some point my graded card inventory got enough that I wanted to buy a bunch of those shoe boxes that you can see right there and start actually sorting them in a way that would be much more helpful for me to be able to actually go straight to where I need to go to find the card that I need to ship out. So this stuff is mostly video background stuff. So I get to display some of my cool items. I got, you know, all the cards that you see behind me and my live streams and my different videos. Underneath there, we have just some random knickknacks, some storage things. We've got some stuff that I need to bring up to the shop to sell. We've got a bunch of dead MetaZoo product there. Those are boxes that I open. They're still full of like singles and stuff, but I just haven't really done anything with them yet. Probably should just burn them at this point, huh? <laughs> then we have some more shipping materials here. This is where I store my boxes and my little envelopes for singles. These are my Preza cases. So when I do different shows or if I have to transport a bunch of graded cards all at once. I got two nice Preza cases. And then I got some Palms Off Card Saver 2s. I've been using those now for a while. They had a really good deal on them and I picked up a ton of them. I think I have like 2,000 of them or something now. These are all a bunch of different boxes from PSA. I like to utilize the PSA boxes for PSA submissions actually. So they just get their cardboard back from me. These are some accessories and materials that I brought up to the shop recently. So I'm going to start selling top loaders and regular uh, penny sleeves as well as ETB sleeves up at the store. Got a cat bed that the cats don't use because of course you buy them a bed, they don't use it. But if you give them a cardboard box, they'll sleep in it all day. This is a bunch of bulk as well that needs to be sorted through. I do have a regular printer. I barely use that thing after picking up a thermal printer sometime last year. Definitely highly recommend a thermal printer for you guys who are just getting started. It's well worth the 150 bucks or whatever it might be for a decent one. Now here we have my graded slab section here. So these are all posted currently on eBay. I decided to do it by alphabetical order. Basically within the alphabetical order, then obviously I do species as well because species would also be in alphabetical order. <laughs> so that just makes sense. Um, but yeah, we have, you know, starts at A. So we got Agron and Alakazam and Ampros and RK9 and all that good stuff. And it goes all the way. You see Lucario, we got L, we got N, we got P, we got S. It goes all the way to Umbreon. And at the back should be, you know, War Turtle and Venusaur, Zapdos, all those Pokemon at the end of the alphabet. So that's how I have all of my graded slabs set up right now. These are just Ultra Pro graded card shoe boxes. I use them both for shows and for storage here in the office. We have a whole thing of Watsy Bulk that I'm currently turning into a vintage binder for the store. We've got some E-Series Bulk doing the same with that. And then we just have a bunch of random crap here that I have to still go through. I've got a bunch of bulk just sitting all around that I need to go through and send off to the Safari Zone or one of those other bulk buying places. The cats just scare each other because they are smart. Uh, this was a recent submission, so I got these Zelda stuff back here recently. That was really awesome. On top of that, we got a bunch of stuff here that, I don't know, it's just Charizards and stuff that I like looking at. Also, these display cases, they're on Amazon. They're like baseball card display case. I don't know what they're called, but they're just a cheaper version of the ones that you can get at Collecticon. So for local shows and stuff, this is perfect for me to use these uh, displays instead of having to rent them or anything like that. 
this here is my setup, I guess. I do have an employee, it's Mr. Roboto here. It is a single card scanner. I haven't used it in a while, but it's pretty awesome for single cards. You can check out my current eBay listings for single cards and those were all scanned using the Fujitsu 8170. Then we have just a bunch of random crap everywhere. I print my labels on this desk. Usually I package stuff on that desk. Uh, I got three screens over there. This, when I'm doing live streams or when I'm doing pack openings, I have this big arm that holds the camera that I use, has a light on it, which is really helpful. I actually move that onto this desk for when I do uh, videos and stuff like that. It's basically a full tour of the office. The last thing I'll show you, and uh, you know, I'm not proud of this, all right, so cut me some slack, is my uh, shipping stuff. <laughs> I guess I really need to go through here and break down all the boxes and make it all nice and neat. But unfortunately for those boxes, I just don't have the time to do that right now. So they just kind of pile up in the closet and I get to close the door and walk away every day, not having to look at it, which is great. One of the things unique to my day to day as a Pokemon card seller is that I have a consignment agreement with a local comic book store. I have a four foot section in the store that I'm able to stock with Pokemon cards and other Pokemon related products at the store locally in the area for a small fee. Right now that agreement is that I pay them $100 a month for rent, basically for the space itself, and then they take 10% of all sales that happen within the confines of their store. I've been in this space a little over a year now. Sales started at around four to $500 a month, and now we're doing between $1,000 and $1,500 a month, with our best month being around $2,000 in sales around the holidays of last year. It's a small store, but it's stacked floor to ceiling with used books and a huge selection of old comic books. There were two projects that brought me up to the store tonight. One was I needed to restock the booster packs that I have in the display case. I was running really low on all of the sets prior to Temporal Forces, so I bought a cool bundle that Safari Zone was advertising of all of the Scarlet and Violet sets, including Temporal Forces, at around $2.45 per pack. I am able to pretty regularly sell booster packs at the store for about $4.50. I try to be just under what someone could buy a pack for at a local store like a Target or a Walmart. At a $4.50 sales price, after the 10% fee, I get around $1.50 profit per pack. After refilling the display case of every Scarlet Scarlet and Violet set, 36 packs a piece. It is now full to the brim of a variety of packs that hopefully people will want to buy and rip. Project number two is taking this Japanese binder, all the cards out, and refilling the Japanese binder that's up at the store. I wasn't really sure at first what the demand for Japanese cards was going to be in a local context. It does really well for me on eBay, but that's because a lot of international buyers come to my store to buy graded Japanese cards. But I wasn't sure how that was going to be locally, if people were going to have any sort of interest in Japanese cards versus English cards. So while I do try to carry as much English as I can, I was extremely surprised by the reception of Japanese cards. Everyone loves the Japanese cards. Everyone loves the English cards too. There is definitely as much hunger for the Japanese as there is for the English from the local collector. Last year, there was another hobby store that moved in across the street from where we were at, and they did advertise that they were going to be carrying Pokemon cards. Lucky for me, most of their cards are English singles. They don't currently carry packs as far as I'm aware, and they don't do graded cards, and they don't do sealed Japanese boxes. So what I tried to do to set myself apart from what they carry was basically to carry those things that I specialize in, but also carry things that they don't carry. So we can kind of complement ourselves. I have the Japanese singles and the graded cards and the sealed product, and they have a lot of those English single collections that come in. They purchase a lot of those, and they have those for sale. So I think that it's really been kind of a mutual relationship. People come to our store, they go to their store. There's a lot of cross propagating because we carry different things, which I think has been advantageous again for the both of us with carrying Pokemon cards. At first I thought since they were a much bigger operation that it was going to be more contentious, but it's actually been really helpful. So now we're back at the office and I needed to remove the rest of the Japanese cards that didn't fit in the binder up at the store from this binder because recently I got some requests from customers that they would like to see more vintage cards up at the shop. So I decided to remove the rest of these cards and create a vintage binder with a lot of that Watsy bulk that I showed earlier in the video. I decided for this binder, I wanted to categorize the cards by set. So I needed to find a way to clearly 
designate which cards were from which specific set. So I decided to create these binder placeholders that have the name of the set clearly represented on a label on the back of a trading card so that they fit nicely into the binder slots. The reason why I wanted to categorize this particular binder by set and not by species was because I feel like most people that are looking for vintage Watsi at this point are looking for those singles to finish their sets. So I figured it'd be easier for those people if they could just flip to the set that they were trying to complete and easily find those cards that they were looking for. It's super nostalgic going through and filling out this vintage Watsi binder. Such great artworks brings me back to when I was a kid collecting these sets for the very first time. One of the things I look forward to most after a long day is getting comfortable underneath my weighted blanket, cuddling with my cats, and watching a couple episodes of TV, a movie, or playing some video games before bed. For most of the day, Keiko is a pretty timid and standoffish cat, but like clockwork, the minute I am underneath that blanket, she is on my lap. Mika needs to be near me and around me all day, but even somehow she understands that this is Keiko and I's one-on-one -on -one time. It's not the craziest, most exciting day. Some people may even say it looks boring or lonely, but as long as I'm with these two fuzzy monsters at the end of the day, it's good enough for me. 